Next up is Richard Hertig. He's at the University of Iowa and directs their assistive devices lab. In addition, Richard's been implementing an inpatient AAC assistive technology program at university hospitals and clinics in Iowa City. Hello, Richard. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me uh, along. Perhaps you can tell us some of something about the research results that you and your student Lauren Zuba have collected that relate to the need for AAC and assistive technology services in the hospital. I'd be happy to. Lauren Zubo uh, and I uh, have wanted to sort of understand exactly what kinds of needs our patients have uh, with regard to being able to access the nurse call uh, and then communicate with the nurse. We know from the research literature that when patient provider communication is not uh, in place, that there can be some uh, adverse effects leading to either traumatic injury uh, or in some cases even death. Uh, and so what we wanted to know was uh, in our facility here, um, how many patients uh, on any particular day uh, were unable to use the standard nurse call uh, or uh, needed some form of AAC tool or strategy to be able to communicate once they had the nurse's attention. Um, we chose to use our electronic charting method to determine uh, if a patient could or could not um, access the nurse call uh, or um, needed some form of AAC because uh, their normal modes of communication were limited due to either intubation or tracheostomy. Uh, we limited um, our sample to those patients that were conscious uh, and above the age of three. Uh, and so we're able to determine on every day of a particular sampling week uh, exactly how many patients um, needed uh, either assistive technology to access the nurse call or some form of AAC strategy in order to have effective communication. On this slide, uh, I'm showing you um, the, the results uh, for uh, the first sample we collected uh, over a week in January. Um, we've done this now over a number of different weeks over the year in order to determine how stable these results are, and our findings so far indicate that this is pretty typical. Um, this graph shows you a day-by-day -day breakdown uh, in terms of the total number of patients uh, and uh, the purple bar uh, is the, the number of patients that need uh, uh, some form of assistance accessing the nurse call. We've labeled these AT candidate. Uh, the blue bars um, indicate the number of patients who uh, need some form of AAC because of intubation or uh, tracheostomy. Uh, and the orange bars represent uh, the number of patients who need both uh, uh, access, uh, assistance with access to the nurse call and AAC. Um, so as you see for um, our facility, which um, is a fairly large facility with uh, you know, a, a fairly large number of patients uh, seen on, on any particular day, that uh, we uh, are going somewhere between just below 50 to just about 60 patients a day who need some form of assistance with uh, getting the nurse call uh, to work properly. Uh, and that we get uh, from uh, about 25 to about 40 uh, patients a day who need uh, some form of uh, AAC uh, and that uh, on average about 20, 25 patients uh, need uh, some form of uh, nurse call adaptation as well as AAC. Um, on the next slide, uh, I break the this down so that you can see uh, where these patients are. So in the upper panel, um, I have the data for the patients on our uh, intensive care units. Um, and there you see that uh, we have a, a fairly large number of patients that need uh, assistive technology to access the nurse call, uh, as well as AAC strategies. And that, that seems to sort of uh, 
be fairly uh, consistent, somewhere between 20 and 35 uh, patients uh, on any given day. Uh, if we take a look at the patients who are not on the uh, intensive care units, uh, what we see is that many more patients need assistance with access to the nurse call. Uh, obviously, um, the result of perhaps sort of weakness and inability to access the standard call. Um, and uh, far fewer of those patients, uh, because they're less likely to uh, be um, on ventilatory support uh, on those units. Uh, and very few of those patients um, need both um, access to the nurse call assistance as well as AEC. Um, our findings basically uh, suggest that there's a large number of patients um, in a tertiary care facility like ours that need some form of help with access to the nurse call and uh, access to AAC strategies. Clearly, this uh, is arguing for uh, staffing at a 24-7 level. Um, and uh, because of the large number and the wide range of units on which these patients are, are housed, that we will need to have our equipment deployed uh, uh, across the hospital where it can be easily accessed uh, and put to use as patients uh, come to need either assistance with a nurse call or AC. Um, being able to do this requires a uh, collaboration uh, with the other healthcare providers and in particular the nurses uh, who are the ones who are basically doing most of that patient provider communication on an ongoing basis uh, and what we have to do here is make sure that um, the nurses and the other healthcare providers understand um, how our service uh, can help them in terms of getting them to quickly uh, get an appropriate nurse call system set up for a patient uh, and when the patient is non-oral uh, and in need of some form of AAC um, that they can deploy some low-tech uh, strategies immediately and when they need uh, additional help to be able to know who to contact uh, and do that. Uh, I've been working with another one of my PhD students, uh, Deb Downey, on developing some online uh, tutorials to sort of basically bring nurses and other healthcare providers up to speed with regard to um, assistive technology and AAC. Uh, a key element to having everything work is that uh, you have people who are in position to basically maintain all of the, the switches and the AAC systems uh, and capable of doing the kind of custom programming that's necessary to bring about effective communication for a particular patient on a particular unit. And as we begin to deploy equipment uh, in hospitals, we clearly have to also pay attention to uh, how we uh, handle things like infection control, because especially when we're dealing with the patients on the in patient intensive care units, uh, we need to uh, be absolutely certain that we're not introducing uh, harm uh, when we introduce any of our technology. Thank you, Richard. What great points you've made and how nice it is to see that you've documented the critical need for augmentative and alternative communication as well as assistive technology in hospitals. Shows us once again the value of collecting information and data that it really and truly informs our practices. You told us key considerations about providing AAC and AT services for patients, as well as the need for training and collaboration across disciplines. Thank you so much. My pleasure.